Welcome back to the Nightlife Podcast Season 3. I'm not going to say what episode because I'll probably get it wrong, but I will put it down here so you guys can see what, what episode it is. Um, and today we continue what we said we were going to be doing during this third season, and that is uh, talking about technology and the different ways to approach uh, your clientele and get your clientele to come to your venues if you are struggling with that in this, you know, just new world that we live in. So for that, I welcome my friend Nathan. Thank you very much, you, my friend. Thank you for having me. Nathan, Thank your you. last name? Hirschbein. Hirschbein. Yeah, Hirschbein. man, I, I hate trying to spell those last names. That <laughs> Polish, are, Polish. Yeah. How do you spell that? It's H I R S H B E I N. So Hirschbein. Yeah. yeah. Where, where do you say from? Polish. It's Polish. Yes. A- and Polish you are from. from- I'm from originally from Venezuela, but my grandparents are European, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. And you've been here your whole life pretty much, huh? Yes, I, I moved to the United States in 2002 from Venezuela, and then now I'm a U.S. citizen. I've been living in Miami ever since, you know, since 2008. So. All right, cool, yep. cool, cool. All right, Nathan, so, so basically what I want to talk to you about is about AI SMS. Yes. Okay, so the past few episodes I've been talking, I, I spoke to somebody who built an amazing app uh, yes. for the nightlife industry. I spoke to somebody who does... Um, Artificial intelligence, I guess, the chatbots yes. for the nightlife industry, mm-hmm. which is something I love also, um, how both of those um, you know, have been working. And I spoke to somebody about social media and how to use those things and integrate it with the social media and those kinds of things and ads and what works and what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And in today's um, you know, world that, that's evolving so much with all these new things, it's crazy because we old school promoters, you know, I've been doing this for so long. It's been 25 plus years that I've been doing this. Yes. For us, it's, it's weird because we are used to, you know, touching somebody on the shoulder and being able to do that kind of connection uh, mm-hmm. to bring somebody to a venue. And, uh, and now we got we to, gotta, I guess, you know, figure out a way to be on top of all these new things. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about what it is that, that you guys do. Sure, of course, of course. Well, we, you know, we, I, I partner up with a, with a person from California and we started a company called AISMS. We first started using an assistant database and driving customers. By the way, AISMS as in artificial intelligence and yes, SMS, SMS, it, mm-hmm. which is text. Right. Exactly, text messaging. It's right, right now we're trying to get away from the term of, you know, text messaging as mass text messaging because there's a really big trend, especially with Uber and Uber Eats that everything in technology is going to be mobile soon and it's going to be okay. a very efficient way to streamline a lot of operations. So I said, I want to be involved in technology and I want to have a partner to have experience in technology. So we started pretty much using existing databases from T-Mobile and AT&T and Verizon to drive specific customers for specific outcomes. Let's say for a plan upgrade to to buy us a new phone, a specific lo- location. So we would actually read a database that actually, let's say T-Mobile would have, let's say they have 800 customers, whether it's a little franchise I used to work with, okay. and they say, look, we want to push a different plan, and then we want them to these customers to go to this store because it's our franchise. So okay. we would read the customers, which customers eligible for which offers, whether it's like subprime retention, um, refer a friend, and then we would send them a text message because it's actually allowed in the terms of service. And then that customer would go redeem that specific offer and that specific store. So we can build all kinds of campaigns to drive in specific revenue for first T-Mobile franchises was our first customer. I see. So, you know, it's, it's a very interesting way of driving additional revenue, you know, by the franchise. Because when you have a franchise for T-Mobile, like they have a lot of restrictions and sometimes you have to abide a lot by the marketing that T-Mobile does corporate. But we brought something different because we could actually upsell the customers that they already have. So that was something great. So when do you open uh, up and say, you know what, let's get into the nightlife industry. Let's try to get those guys to become our customers, I guess, and um, and help them drive the the, the clientele. When does that happen Or, or why? Sure. Um, what happened? What, like, I started noticing that, you know, especially with so many new venues, you gotta grab people's attention, right? You gotta right. be able to bring them to your event. I've been we waiting for be- this coladita for. <laughs> Gracias. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So obviously, the whole point of the nightlife industry, and you want to build up your events, is you want more people to come, right? So right. you want to have a voice. And right now, the market is so saturated with so many new venues, left and right. Everybody's trying to compete for people's attention. Correct. You have to find some sort of way using technology, especially with the right amount of word choice and the right amount of campaigns to build traffic to people to come to our venues organically. Because right now, 
it's also becoming more people are just used to in terms of you know AI people are used to more text messaging they're more used to AI so the market is, is is getting to know this this system a little bit better but you have to use it more efficiently so I said you know what why don't we use why don't we open up this market which is using our system for events and promotional companies to drive people to the events and drive people to different you know venues so we started working with a really big promotional company and we're doing really well we got them you know using different campaigns we got them about 20,000 new subscribers you can mention them by the way if you want to they're good friends of the house <laughs> um, but uh, all right so then then tell us a little bit about how it works with the nightlife industry what, what's an example of one of the things that you guys can do to okay. help drive Sure. So it's, it's, a, it's actually a multiplier effect. So a lot of you have to give people incentives. A lot of kids nowadays, they want to be able to have a free bar tab. They want to be able to drink for free. You know, it's a choice between going to this venue and this venue. Sometimes whether I get a free drink. Like right. some, so what we do is, let's say we set. We, we, Which, by the way, it's something that all promoters use and we have been using for a long time, but in a personal level. Right. You say my name at the door, you get him free. Um, you know, I get getting in, come in with a group of friends and I get you a bottle of champagne, a group of girls, it's your birthday, I get you a bottle. Those kinds of things have been around for a while. Nowadays, what I see is that with the social media era, mm -hmm. it's now called a giveaway um, and people are using it a little differently, you know, kind of, but, but in, in your case, mm -hmm. it's kind of a mix of that giveaway, kind of like a price or you're giving everybody something. Well, we have to build it the right way because what we want is that we want to build up and we want to we want we want, we want to mul multiply the word of mouth. So what we do is what we've done in the past. And by the way, cheers! Thank you for having me. Salud, by the way, <laughs> great setup, great setup. Cheers. Is that by the way, in Miami? You must have el, el café cubano. It's, <laughs> it's a must. phenomenal, really great stuff. Ooh, it's awesome. So, what what we do is a campaign example. It's like look. We sent a text message to people said, look, if you share it with about three of your friends, then you're in line to get a free drink ticket, right? All and right. we can actually track that through different links and different codes that people actually share, whether they're actually at the physical event, okay. right? And what happens is once people start sharing it with that SMS, not only is that quickly easy to share, we can actually track the phone number, but it actually multiplies your database. So not only are you promoting your event, but you're multiplying your database. Okay, wait, uh, how do you multiply in that sense? Okay, so let's say I have, I get a text message and I send a te that specific text message, that code to somebody else and somebody else redeems it with that original, right. our system can track that. So that means that that person just multiplied. It's like a cell. So okay. I send it, let's say to 500 people, right. we can track in our system, like let's say it expanded to 600. So with that specific code, so that's the multiplier effect. So if we only send it to 500 people and then 600 people show up, then that code was shared a hundred times, right? Right. So that's how the so math the multiplication adds up. is from people sharing the code. Exactly. So that's one example how we're driving, you know, more people to more events through that. Also, yeah. so well, you you can also send them an incentive to share. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's say I tell I, I send out to you know to my bla I blast out ten thousand numbers and I tell ten thousand numbers you get a free drink, you know if you show up hopefully they won't all show up at the same time. But let's say you send it out to 10,000 people and you say, if you want to share this, you know, share this with five people and earn the possibility of winning a, a full service bottle, whatever, you know, I don't know. Exactly. X, Y, Z. Exactly. Um, okay. And people are going to do it because people want, people want to feel cool. When they go to an event, they want to feel like they're getting something for free or they're getting an incentive or they're getting right. in. The, it depends how you want to build it in the nightlife. Right. Also, a really great example of how we're we want to change the nightlife industry also as well is that before there's a lot of programs that are pre-programmed when you first send a let's say a text blast or something that we're trying to get is that it looks very fake it looks very robotic and you yeah, know yeah, when yeah. you get it from an AT&T or T-Mobile it looks like there's lines and it looks not real it looks like a robot so right. our system is the only one that you can build a custom message like a paragraph so it literally looks like a promoter saying it somebody was sexing That's exactly yeah. thank you so it looks like a promoter is is sending it okay and then it literally looks and the chances of probability that somebody will reply to a text message that literally looks like a paragraph that you just sent me is right. a lot higher probably about 20 percent than one of the right. pre-programmed text messages so it looks more like a text what about what number does it come from 
Okay, there's different kinds of numbers. There's something called a short code or something called a long code. Okay. Okay, so in different things that kind of marketing specifically for the nightlife industry, sometimes a long code is a dedicated code that only you have, that you have to pay for, which is a certain price. It's LMG. Got it. So 599 is the only number that you have in the United States. So nobody else coming in from 99, it's your number. There's right. something called a short code that it's shared among people. So right. you have to go online and let's say it comes from different people. But for your specific industry is we're giving you a code that's only for yours. So because yeah. it's our proprietary system, you're gonna have a long code. So when somebody receives the text, it looks like a text, but it doesn't come from a phone number. Exactly. So now if what if they want to reply? Do they reply to the code? They reply to the text. They're literally, so we pre-program like about, you know, 20 to 30 to 40, depends on different conversations that you can have with okay, the Okay, so chat in box. that way it becomes like a chat box. Exactly, okay. exactly. So it's a pre-programmed chat box. Got it. So it's an algorithm that people say, and let's say, hey, do you want to show up to come to Latin Cafe at, um, for that party on a Saturday night? Right. And then you ask usually an open-ended question, and I'll tell you why. Because when you ask a question, and we're become experts in this, right? Because we started working with big promotional companies. When you ask, when you don't make a statement, but you ask a question, the probability that people are going to reply and the probability that people are going to keep it and not opt out, probably about 20, 30% higher. Gotcha. So that's something that we've done through our experience that we've learned is, is how to approach and how to promote your parties the right way. Right. How not to make a statement. Say, hey, show up for a party Saturday night, 3 p.m. Opt out. Say, hey, Saturday night, 3 p.m.? Uh, oh, <laughs> 3 a.m., sorry. There you <laughs> And say, hey, how would you like to show up at a, at a Barseco on a Saturday night at 3 p.m., how would you like to have a free bottle? How would you like to have a free drink? Question mark. If right. you question, if you ask the right question the right way and you have the, 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 a big database, you're gonna get a, a huge amount of people to show up. Right. So that's that's something that we've learned through our experience of how we get the, the largest amount of conversions so people to actually not opt out and people to actually show up to the events with the right amount of questions. Right. So that's something that we have experienced. With. Yeah. So one of the things we've been talking about is how the open rate for email has dropped down so much. Yes. I mean, and we've been building our database, our email database for the past, you know, 20 plus uh, years. And, and it's crazy, you know, we have over 250,000 emails. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in reality, a lot of those people don't open them. You know, you, we get what, like a 6% open rate on emails now. Not even worth it. You know, I, get, yeah. I get 200, 200 a day. You must get right, 200 oh, yeah, a day. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the thing is, I'm, I'm like sick with email. Like I, I you know, I'm a robot with the email, so I, I keep my inbox inbox at zero yes. at all times. I make sure it's the first thing I do when I wake up, you know, before not going to the gym, and <laughs> it's pretty much like I, I I'm ruled by the my, my my email controls me, but I'm not the usual. You know, most people actually don't give a shit. They just you know uh, this, delete I'm delete not, everything. Right um, now, open rate for chatbot. I know that it's in the 80 to 90 percentile. Yep. What about text? Okay. Text messaging is about 90 percent open rate. Everybody's going to read a text message. Right. And I think it's even more powerful. And let me tell you why. Because text messaging is not going to go away ever. Right. Yeah, Different totally. apps is going to, and I'm going to tell you why. Because apps are going to change over time. Because maybe you have a little bit. You don't have enough memory now. I have to delete the app, I have this. I've deleted WhatsApp so many times and reopen it and reopen and delete it. Text messaging is never ever gonna go away. You're always gonna have text messaging, right? Even, look, the new way, let's, let's put the example of lending money, right? Before it used to be Cash App or Venmo, but now Bank of America started creating a way, Chase started creating a way that you can send money. Right. So you have to think ahead about what's actually gonna be in the future. WhatsApp is always gonna be strong because it's internationally, but in terms of tech messaging, it's the most powerful because it's not an app. It's something that everybody has. Everybody has text messaging. Yeah, like, you know, WhatsApp falls, that falls, you know, for a day as Instagram and exactly. Facebook did. With the text, it won't happen. Exactly, you know? that's my point. Um, exactly. All right, so. Exactly. That's, that's very interesting. Okay, let me ask you. What if somebody decides, somebody has created their own chatbot and they already have their chatbot pre-designed yes. for all their answers, all those things. Can you guys integrate their chatbot to your system? It it will it would be through the it would be through the communication, but it wouldn't be through in terms of this. It would be almost the same system, but with the SMS. 
So the question, the questions, and the campaigns could be the same way, but right. it will be through SMS. Meaning, meaning if people reply, yes. because not, you know you still do everything, you know uh, exactly. You you attack S with SMS with the SMS. Wise. Yeah. But then if people reply, they can be sent to a different chatbot that's already pre-made. Is that that's that's yes. something you know like when it would be through a, through a text message. So let me so let yeah. I'll, I'll 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 give you as clear as possible. So yeah. visualize it instead of being a chat box, it's going to be an SMS answer. So it's going to be even better because okay, it's it's, it. it's communication, right? right? So it's think about it as an SMS as the same way as a chat box, but even better because it's like you're even texting somebody. So when you talk to me about having about 40 different answers already pre-prepped, you know, yes, um, pre-programmed, yes, they are gonna reply SMS. Exactly. Oh, okay, so it's. So it's even an more SMS powerful. chatbot, pretty much. It's okay, even more got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. there's th there's three Sports. different things that what makes our our, our, our our technology successful is because first it looks like a person, it looks like somebody's saying it. It's not robotic, it's not with lines, you know, the right. same way that you get it with yours. Okay, so that's a plus. Our open rate is a lot higher and our opt-out rate is a lot lower, right? Because of right. that specific instance. We have pre pre Do you always have to say Opt out. You have to. You right. have to. It's that, part that, of it's part law, of the law, I guess. But we've experienced that also putting in questions is way more effective because it's when you don't put an open ended question, right. people get very receptive, right? So when you have a chatbot, you can answer the questions. By the way, production didn't want their coffee. I'm on my third. But I'm gonna take <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so the chatbot, when you get uh, whatever message, yes. you know. Um, you answer to it, you say, okay, you want to come on Saturday at 3 p.m., as you insist to do. <laughs> um, so you put there, yeah, I have a group of people. But when you answer to the chatbot, um, whatever question you answer, you, 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 should, like, you have options to like press a button. With this, it's, is it open-ended questions? So it, you there can say be, whatever? It, it's it's open-ended, and our system is going to read about which is the best answer to the question to the that question. they answer. Yeah. That's the best question. We try to make it as simple as possible because if you start adding like let's say buttons and pictures and all that, it actually starts to hurt your brand and your product because you want to make it as simple as possible. You just right. want people to show up as quickly as possible. Correct. Right? So what we try to do is using our experience and you know the, the one of the biggest promotion agencies of Florida, you know, we're working with right now, um, we developed a ca specific campaign. We got them 20,000 new subscribers. Now we're going to build a campaign for one of the, the biggest events they got going on this weekend, right? Right. So the way that I suggest is through what we've done with T-Mobile and all these different companies is make it as simple as possible, make it effective, a low opt-out rate, and make sure people show up and they have right. some sort of code or something that's simple or something like that. And even if more people show up than less and they don't redeem any sort of code, you know it's also because of you because you build a campaign for that specific event, right? Right. So there's different ways to measure the amount of success and, and, okay. and we're doing it, which is great. Are you guys doing this only in Miami? Or are you starting to do this somewhere else? What, what's the plan with the when it comes to this, to the entertainment we're, industry? We're, we're starting from the ground up. You know, we, we just started in Miami. Because you mentioned the clients you had before. Yes. You know, we're talking about T-Mobile, like, you know, all those guys, yeah. it's... it's Yes, so it's huge. You know. Yes, we there. We work with one of the biggest franchises that are in New York City. They're in New York, but they have stores all over the United States. Right. But I, I want to build this business to be a multi-million-dollar business. You know, everything's going to be mobile soon. It's just you right. have to do it the right way. And right. People don't know how to do it the right way. Um, but I have big plans. You know, obviously, I mean, I see you guys. I see you as a big powerhouse. You know, I know, I know you guys from a, you know, from a while, and you guys throw great parties. So I'm like, look. Thank you. There's um, there's there's a great need because the market's getting very saturated, specifically right. with Wynwood, Del Rey, Boca. Everybody's everybody's trying to fight for attention from people, and you need an edge. You need an edge because right. word of mouth is not enough anymore. Word right. of mouth is not enough. So if you can, if you have the database, you know which you guys have, you guys have the numbers which you guys have. We can convert some of your emails to the phone numbers to build a campaign to drive traffic. Right. It's called just the law of averages, which means that. You have enough ammo in the tank to take down the castle, Correct. right? So, Correct. or you know, or the castle's medieval, but you know what I mean. But it's it's using ways to drive technology, and I think it's it's really awesome, you know, that that people are are, are that you're looking finding ways to drive using technology the right way with people that are that know how to use it to right. get more people through the door, and that's how we're gonna do it. Got it, got it. How fast does somebody get an answer? Is it 
as quick as a chatbot or? It's pretty quick. It's usually about, I would say about 20, 30 seconds. Got it. Yeah, because sometimes, that's one of the things that sometimes with the chatbots, I'm a little, like, I don't like sometimes, mm -hmm. is that before I'm pressing the button, I'm already getting an answer. Yes. So that seems very robotic. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, and, I, I, you know, sometimes you want to make, uh, by the way, oh, they just made it a little romantic uh, yeah. in here. <laughs> I know, I was um, just noticing that. <laughs> so, so the, so the thing is that, like, I, I don't like tricking people into, hey, think that this is a person when it comes to the chatbots. I'd rather let people know this is a chatbot, you know what I mean? Because it is obvious that it is. Yeah. Um, when it's it comes to this, it just feels like it's something that we, we, we can use um, and and it will feel so real and so much like a person yes. that you can make it, you know, be that way where it's, you know, you give it even a name and say, it's Janice, you know, you know, their personal assistant. Yeah, or yeah. Whatnot, and, and yeah, whatever else we yeah. can help you with, yes, you know. Uh, if you would like a reservation or how many people or what day or you know those 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 different like you say 40 different options or whatnot exactly so, so I exactly. Like it. it's, it's interesting the question is can so, so do you see this as something more for the club owners or for the promoting companies it really depends it can be for both if if the owner wants to do their 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 own if the promoter wants to promote different kinds of campaigns right now is is we're paying the cost of, it, right. of the messaging so we're not passing it to you you know we're just paying it for our time and for the system but it really depends if you have a big database and if you have numbers you're going to win because it's something called the you know what the you know the law of averages so all of averages is if you have a certain amount of numbers mm -hmm. For a certain amount of deals, you're gonna to expect to close a certain amount. It's just it trickles down, right? So right. Have, it's exactly so. So, so based on the law of averages, if you have a big enough database and you build a campaign the right way, you're gonna get the best. You're gonna get the outcome you want because it's Correct. it's just called the law of averages. Right. So, um, so it's really interesting, but it's something that it's cool because people. People, you, you need to tell people what you're doing. You need to find an alternative route, alternative way to drive traffic. Because what I feel now is that with every new venue, is the people that utilize technology the right way are the ones that are gonna win. And the people that don't are just gonna be left behind. You know? Awesome, awesome. Do you, do you see, cause, cause I see sometimes a little conflict of interest when um, it happens with the apps, it happens with the chatbots, it happens well, when a promoter is used to being the one that handles all the clientele and has that uh, leverage when it comes to negotiating with the venues, mm -hmm. if this um, becomes available to the clubs, mm -hmm. the clubs are gonna feel like, okay, now I can do this on my own. And a lot of times promoters will be like, yeah, I'm not gonna push for that because I don't want this to be, you know, be the, mm -hmm. the issue. So <laughs> just, you know, just throwing that out there. <laughs> but, That's uh, a good point. But it is something to, to think about. Yeah. In the end, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about it. I love when everybody tries anything because they realize even more that they're not the ones that know how to do this part of yes. the job. That's yes. why, That's why. you know, there's an expert to each, to, you know, to every different thing, you know. And, and it's like, I, as a promoter, mm -hmm. I, I don't go into a venue and try to get into you know, their kitchen or their bar Good and point. try to fix what, however they do stuff Good in the back. When I'm an owner, it's the complete opposite. I'm fixing those issues. As yep. an owner, I look at that side and I try to stay away from the promotion when I'm an owner yes. and hire promoters that can do that job. I will help push, but I'm not gonna be trying to take away from their deal because yeah, I brought some of the people, so I'm not gonna pay you full, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's in that sense. And I know how to answer that is because look, we also, and, and, and we never got a confidence this because we don't have enough right. bandwidth. So we're, right. in terms of the bandwidth, we're only going to bring in a certain amount of clients and clients that do a lot of different events because that's how we can bring in the most money, right? Correct. Because we're not going to, we could sign up every club if we want, but we don't have enough bandwidth. We, right. we really don't. So, and our model fits in better with people that do more events all the time because right. there's different ways to drive in revenue, different campaigns, okay. different giveaways. So, yeah, it's utilizing technology. You know, you, you have to find a different way to drive in people to your to your event, right? It, and that way is through a specific communication method to do it the right way. And right. I gave you some different specific examples of, you know, how we're doing it. 
and you know, and the and the and the, the, the promoters that are using technology the right way and the promotional companies right. are gonna be able to get the market share because they're right. the ones that are utilizing technology. So two last questions, Nathan, yes. before we go because our time is running out. Yes. Uh, line of people waiting to be interviewed, just kidding. <laughs> um, so two last questions are is this cost effective? You know, I'm, I'm, it's not about you saying how much it costs or how it works, whatever it is, you know, yep. um, it might be different or cater to each person differently. And second of all, where can people find you and if they want to, you know, get this service from you guys? Yeah. So, of course, we have a website as well, you know, AISMS.io, and there's a phone number there and an email, of course. And it is cost effective because not only like we're in terms of our, we're not passing along of the cost of the text messaging to a lot of people, which is great, we're eating it, so it is effective. And it is cost effective for different people that we know based on the size of the database, right? Because if the database is a certain amount and the phone numbers are a certain amount, we can drive the outcomes that you want. So let's say if you need to make a certain amount of money, this, based on what you have in, the, in our experience, we're able to drive enough money for right. the, to justify the profit. Right. Also, we can also convert also emails into numbers and then build a campaign. Right. So it is. And I'm going to give you guys a little idea. We met last week about using the services. Yes. We actually just had a prior meeting right before this, and we're going to definitely be talking about using their services for LMG. Um, you know, we like to try everything out for sure. Um, and one of the things we discussed is we measure usually the way we measure promoters. So we measure stuff by, so how many people did I bring? How many, you know, how many customers? Or did the sales go up this much or whatever? Those are our measurements in the end. So, and, and they were willing to pretty much, you know, yeah, we can do uh, it. kind of say guarantee, yeah, this is what I'm gonna bring you. And this is how much I'm gonna charge you to bring you that. So we have kind of a measurement um, as you would if you were paying for ads on Facebook or Instagram, whatever. It's just so about coming idea. in creative as well. Like what, exactly. the, what how, how creative you wanna be, like what, right. like, and that's the part that's fun because you know, as, as a promoter, as a promotional company, you also gotta get very creative. It's not about just show up. It's about like how you can build an experience and give the customer, you know, be a good time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nathan, thank you so much thank you uh, for, for having me. today. No, it's man, been it fun. It's a been pleasure. Fun. And uh, I hope it works. We're going to test it out. And uh, we are going to let you know how it goes for LMG for sure. Yes. Again, you know, you can find me at The Nightlife Entrepreneur on Instagram. You find the book on Amazon, uh, The Nightlife Podcast, uh, nightlifepodcast.com. You find all the prior episodes. Yes. And remember to follow LMG Miami and go to all our freaking parties. See you guys next week. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Thank boss. You.